characteristic week they are putting uh, from the daily jam where it says that uh, in the same place it was uh, said No, but we are not concerned. I am not answerable to the behavior of, of everybody else. I am telling you the, the correct way of doing things according to Islam, according to the teachings of the Holy Quran and the traditions of the found, Holy Founder of Islam, peace be upon him. So you want me to defend the case of such people as have deviated from the path of tradition and uh, instructions of the Holy Quran. Why should I? Ask them. So the first part I have answered, the second part which I should ask those people about who you read in, in the news, right? But you would, yes. <laughs> No, no, there is no question of space, shortage of space, because each prayers are said outside the mosques, in, in the open. Yes. Because it is understood that ordinary mosques, which are built for specific needs of a small area, could not be sufficient to meet the requirements of a much larger area where normally so many mosques are situated. So, obviously, no Eid could be said in, in a mosque because Eid covers a much larger area of people and uh, so it is said in the open spaces where there is no shortage of, of room. this issue of keeping fast during a journey has been decided by Hazrat Musim and he has also spoken on the subject in general at the past few ways I mean have also been covered the general picture is created by various of his sayings and uh, verdicts I should say is this that Islam does not promote keeping the fasts during journeys because the words used by the Holy Quran indicate that Allah has permitted you not to keep fast during a journey. So when according to Hazrat Masih when you permit someone out of love and consideration for him if he does not make use of that permission it is, uh, you know, disrespectful in a way. If you permit your child to enjoy something, and you say, no, 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 I'm going to study, I don't want that permission to be, to be used, you will not be as happy as when he thanks you so much and, you know, with a, with a good grace he accepts your permission and enjoys whatever is in store for him. That you like much better. So in the light of this psychological situation, <coughs> Hazrat Mishra Sattu Aslam inferred that Allah could have, could have made it obligatory, could have expressed it in words, which might have meant that if you cannot keep fast during a journey because of the hardship, you are permitted, but still we, pre we want, we prefer you to keep fast. Instead of do going into that, what Holy Quran, the Holy Quran tells us is this, that while you are on a journey, you should not keep fast, you should defer the matter till such other times as you have come back to your place and settle down. So, this is not promoted. And in Ahmadiyya attitude, despite the fact that we can keep fast physically and we desire to keep fast, in respect of this special injunction in the Holy Quran, we do not keep fast during journeys. But what is a journey? Now I come to the second point. A journey for Numas has a different uh, definition and a journey for fasting has a different definition. For the Numas, 
in one day, five, one, in 24 hours, five prayers are covered. And between sunset and sunrise, three, and between sunrise and sunset, two other prayers are covered. So if you exceed in traveling the time of one prayer and run into another, at least one prayer can be conceived as between the journey, engulfed by your journey. But in the fasting this cannot happen. You can go a long way between the two uh, extremes, two ends of the fast, that is between sunrise and the sunset, and still your journey will be a part of the fasting, not that the, part of the fasting would become a part of your journey. You understand the point? So, in view of this and in view of uh, many traditions speaking on this issue, I would not refer to all these because then the subject would become rather lengthy. In nutshell, I give, create the picture as we see things in Ahmadiyya. For the ordinary journey where prayers are permitted to be shortened, the criterion used by Ahmadis is that if you leave on a journey, your own place, even if you have traveled just one mile outside the boundaries of the city, you can start having your prayers, reducing the prayers according to the uh, custom and tradition. And when you are approaching your own town, even if it is a furlong from your town, if you have met, not yet ended the uh, entered the town, you can still apply the rules of the journey to your prayers. How long the journey should be? According to the older system, the journeys would, were measured differently by various Muslim scholars who have paid attention to this subject. According to some schools of jurisprudence, a journey means if you travel according to the old mode of travel, nine miles from your town, that begins to be a journey. Some others said no, twelve miles is the minimum. Some said seventeen or even twenty-one or twenty-two. Why this difference? If Islam is one and the injunctions are clear, why should the scholars differ with each other in the length of journey um, from the point of view of jurisprudence? The simple fact is that uh, the mode of travel differed. In some cases, a person on foot normally traveled nine miles and uh, would prefer to stop after the nine miles. That is in view of the weak people. The strong people could go much further. But some people would, would consider it enough for a day to travel nine miles from a town. And that would call, they would call it a day. So those who spoke of nine miles, they had those foot travelers in mind. Pedestrians. And some traveled on horseback. They would go maybe as far as 17 miles or 20 miles and would like to stop there and enjoy the rest of the day, uh, pitching the tent or seeing places. And why just to stop after 20 miles or to 17 miles on a horseback was also determined by the availability of water. And the normal customary provisions for travelers they were situated in some places 20 miles apart, in some places 17 miles apart, in some places 12 miles apart. So, if you were riding a horse or a camelback, then the determination will not be made as how you travel, but the final determination would be made of how far you can travel, provided that you have provisions for your stoppage and night rest and things, water and fodder for, the, for your, uh, you know, the mount and so on. So, each scholar had his own personal experience